Chase, Diamond, Jeff, McDowell on the rod. A little bit to the right, James, just a bit. I don't want to cut this point too close. We loaded up heavy uh, on this middle rod position right here, and I've already shifted the rods down here in this side, but we loaded up heavy in the middle position, and uh, now this fish is going way out to the side. I said to Jeff, I think I better grab the video camera because this guy feels heavy. And now, you look at the rod, he's all, he's crossed all the way over. So here, Brian, what I want you to do, start winding this weight rod in for me till we get to the weight. Go ahead and start winding it. Big fish, here's another. Here, look at this. Simo double right here. Here we go. Just stay right all the way over here to the right, Ed, okay? Jeff, a little bit to your left. Back up, please, Brian. We're going to take this off. We're going to clear the weight rod. Wind it in as quick as you can so that we don't have to... Uh, we're gonna wind that in so that he's not getting in the way. When that comes in, Brian, what I want you to do is take the spoon, hang it in the bridge of the reel, and then put it in the holder, okay? Yep. Jeff, how's this fish feeling? Yeah, this That's the Bill. name of the game. Perfect, keep him coming just like that. I have another run in him, Bill. All right, let's wind down to him. Big boy here, big boy fish. Wheel to the right, Jimmy. You're fine, you got nothing hanging on that board, so we're gonna go right over it. Big giant brown here, Jim. Big giant brown, wind down on him. Easy, easy, neutral, neutral. Beautiful, stay here, Jeff. Forward, Jimmy, forward. Steer him, steer him across, wind down. Wind down, bring him to the center for me. Neutral. Okay, back him up, he's got another line. I got a beautiful fish. Look at the size of that toad. Forward, Jimmy. Get her going forward. Just an absolute slammer of a brown, dude. I, oh, I saw her. <laughs> what an absolute stud of a brown right there. I mean, he is just an absolute hammer. He crossed all the way over, Jeff. And what he did was he grabbed this inside rod. He came off the port side, but he came over and got the inside rod right there. But here's what, uh, here's what I wanted to show everybody. This guy right here, we got that gold perch. Right there is what that fish hit on. Wheel to the right, Jim. That gold perch is what this tanker brown came on. And of course, in the double, we had the Sodas Point Buckeye with the silver back. That guy is just an absolute That slammer. is a, just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful brown tanker. He went where he wanted to go, didn't he? Oh, he left. <laughs> <laughs> went from the middle on one side to the inside on the outside. We were clearing rods left and right just to get him in. Good fish, buddy boy. He was running for open waters, but we put a short circuit on his migration. Ew. Wasn't that a fantastic fish? I mean, we are having a tremendous season on the South Shore. We're catching some enormous examples of browns and steelheads and kings in the skinny water. You know, one of the things that uh, fishermen have been asking me, I've been inundated this year with calls regarding how much weight we put in front of our Michigan Stinger spoons off the planer boards when we're fishing in shallow water. Well, here's the answer. We don't put anything in front of them. We're running those spoons bare. There's a myriad of individuals out there that think you've got to put weight in front of that spoon in order to keep it down. Those spoons are designed to run one to three feet down. So when we're putting the boat in four, five, six feet of water and that board spreading in there into three feet of water, you still got the opportunity to get in there with those Michigan Stinger spoons and clear when you're fishing brown trout. Now that's not to say that there aren't periods of time in the fishery where we're going to add some weight to that. I'm very fond of coming up to a quarter ounce split shot. This little guy right here. When the fish start to move out in 10 or 15 feet of water and those fish are down a little bit in the water column, absolutely, we're gonna put that and pinch that right in front of the bead chain. So it's seven and a half to eight feet up the line from where the, the, the bait's actually trolling. Now here's the standard weight. I thought I would show this as well. There's the 9 sixteenths. That's the standard weight that we're putting on the weight rod when we're running 60 feet back 
clipping this 9 16 weight on and going another 60 to 70 feet back so that we're at 120 or 130 right down the side of the prop wash. Either one of those are going to work. Now as fish start to go deeper, these brown trout really don't move them. Once alewives come in and hit the shoreline, they're going to hang with those alewives and they're going to switch from gobies to that fat rich base or bait source of the alewife. But when the alewives spawn mid-May and they start to move out, follow the alewives because when you follow the alewives, you're going to follow the browns. That's where they're going to be. Many times they're just out in 15 to 30 feet of water and adding a 9 16 or adding something a little bit heavier to the line will get it down. Now once those fish start to go offshore, you can track them in the top 30 or 40 feet of water all the way out to 200 feet. There's no issue with that. But we switch gears when that happens. And I've got these little plastic cases on board my boat and I've, I've pulled out ahead of time here three weights. In the old days we called these gib weights, now they're called deltas. But here's a, here's a one ounce, here's a two ounce, here's a three ounce, and they make fours and they make fives. We carry up to five ounces. And the reason that we do that is we can pay a line out 40 or 50 feet behind the boat, clip this delta weight in, and all we do is, if, if, you, can, if you can imagine that the, the line's going back to the lure here, we slide the line up under that, up under that wire clip, bring it down the center of the weight, we slide it up under this wire clip, and then we pinch it down in between that spring. My fingernail's going in it right there. We pinch the line down in that spring and it runs to the rod. Now, this is the same idea as walleye fishermen have been using for years with the snap weights, but I don't like snap weights for this type of fishing because they're hanging down on a they're hanging down on a beaded chain anytime your lines cross it can get twisted up. These things come through the water just like a bullet because they're egg shaped. They're 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 very uh, aerodynamic and they're going to pull through the water simply and there's less they're less obtrusive so you don't have as much to get tangled up on your line but when you start adding one ounce two ounce up to five ounce you can get a planer board rod in that scenario down to 30 feet down to 35 feet so when those browns move down in the water column and go out offshore you can just add weight to the planer rods in that situation and keep the weight away from the bait that's being trolled and you can retarget those fish now last but not least another great way to target those fish and this is static of course but these uh, big john mini divers you can see they're directional just like a dipsy diver is we leave them on a zero setting but you can tie that to your rod and then run your fluorocarbon tippet back to your bait seven and a half eight feet behind that diver disc it actually in different colors acts as an attractor in front of that but your spoon will pull back there and those are going to get you in the 25 to 30 foot range now to vary your depth of those you've just got to uh, let more line out or bring your line back in you know they're going to have a they're going to have a static depth of about 30 feet is the deepest you're going to be able to pull those but they are absolutely ideal when those browns start to go down 15 to 30 feet and, and move offshore so there's a few different ways that you can add weight and still target those fish as they start to go deeper but keep this in mind when you're fishing skinny water run those michigan stingers bare there is absolutely no reason to be putting weight on your line i've got another monster fish out on the south shore let's go back to the action a weight rod right here and uh we're going to take a look at this guy when he gets in here a little bit closer. He's had some pretty heavy weight all the way coming in. Here's another one right here. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Yeah, Smoke it right there. Straight ahead, Eddie. Got him, Jeff. Yep, yeah. get that one out. He's got to let him swing, though. Okay, he's already popped it out. He's all the way all the way to the outside, so we're going to let that guy swing. How are we doing here, James? He's taking line on me. Sometimes. You haven't seen him yet, have no, you? He's staying down. Okay, uh, just like that, steady as she goes. What's your speed? Okay. We're going to watch this guy pretty closely, and I'm hoping that he's on the Michigan Stinger spoon that I think he's on, then we can make a little uh, 
reference to what we're doing here in the fishing. You can see how uh, <coughs> deep, deep, almost like a pea soup green the water is here. Better than chocolate brown, but still tough for them to hunt. A little bit to the right, Ed. A little bit to the right. It's tough for those fish to see. Look at this guy. He is hammering it. Hammering it. Oh yeah, big fish, big fish. Giant brown. Giant, giant brown. Jimmy, come out all the way over to the right, please. Jeff, you just hang right out there with it? No, no, no we're not. Wait. Yeah, we're not close yet. Wind down, Jim. I can't, I can't get any line, though. Let me see what you got here. Okay, go ahead. I'll give you just a little bit more. Out to him, Jimmy. Don't play such a high rod when he's in tight. Big, giant, giant brown. Back right up, back right up, back right up, back right up. And we got him. Look at the size of this dude. Wow, look at that. that is a freaking smasher of a fish. And look at this. Purple. The purple clown? Purple clown. It's been such a dynamic lure for us this year. Fall colors, just a dandy. There is that purple clown. And look at the kite on this guy. And just such tremendous, tremendous colors on this fish. Uh, Jimmy, give me the sideways pose on that guy. Get him right in the middle. Get him right up. What a what a dandy, dandy, dandy brown. Just beautiful. Testament over the years, how many big fish on weight rods? Oh, that's my favorite is a weight rod. When I come out here, I'm always looking for that weight rod to go because we catch big ones on that. Yeah, he is a smasher. Right in the end of the nose, picking at it, having a hard time finding that in the murky water, but he found it and we short circuited the migration on this. Absolutely great brown trout. Congratulations, buddy.